love the five dollar paint club. I love the five dollar paint club. They will teach me how to paint on my project. Show me how to paint furniture with a new mindset. I love the five dollar paint club. Hey everyone, Serena here with the Five Dollar Paint Club. And before you get started on your tutorial of doing this beautiful gold leafing project or any other project that may uh, fulfill your heart, I wanted to chat with you a little bit about leafing and how you can use them in various different projects. Leafing just isn't for a project like this. Keep in mind, I had a client come to me who loved the blue cabinet and wanted to know if I could add some gold into it for her. I said, sure, I can do just about anything. This is a design that she wanted. So what I wanted to point out to you guys is that gold leafing, foiling, using metallics, there is a, a place for all of it. It may not, you have to remember that in this business, if you're doing furniture to flip, that your style may not be the style of your customers. This is a piece you would not find in my home, but this is a piece you would find in my customer's home. So I need you sometimes to think outside the box. There's various different projects that you could use gold leafing or the foiling or the metallic paints to get that kind of look. Um, obviously a piece like this. Hardware, there's not much hardware on this piece, but door knobs, the, um, the door knobs, the door pulls, um, any of that is a great place to use the leafing. Super easy. Put the glue on, put the leafing over, brush it away, and you got it. Also, another great thing, picture frames. It's also a great way to fix a broken picture frame, to add a little putty to fill in the marks that are broken, and then leaf over the top of it. So those are great ways that you can use gold leafing. But back on the furniture flipping side, if you have a business or a booth, you need to take a minute and think outside the box. I know a lot of times that we're, um, we're prone to put in our booths or our stores what our style is. To spend some time and look around on Pinterest. Like I was saying, this is not my style, but if you get on Pinterest and look around, this is what people want. Um, your customer may be anything from the 20-ish year old millennial to the 70 year old retiree. So depending on the area that you're in, you need to know your market. Um, we happen to have owned a store for you know four or five years. Our market was very much the 35 to 55 year old looking to make their home a beautiful coastal paradise. That was great. I was able to incorporate a lot of my own style into the coastal look, but a lot of it wasn't my look. I don't care for bright pinks and bright, bright greens and bright blues. That's where my mother could come into play and go, you know what, I think that this would be a really nice sea green piece and I'd be like, whatever, and it would sell the next day. So try to know your market that you're selling to and even and just remember, if it's not your style, it's okay to do things that may not reflect your personal home style. So like I said, this piece does not reflect my personal home style. But when a customer comes to me and says, I want gold all over it, I'm like, well, you know, how about we just do some gold here and some gold in there. Um, initially, I just wanted to do gold in there, for, quite frankly, but she wanted a little bit more than that. So as we move on to this tutorial, try to think outside the box. Try to think if you have a booth or you have a store, you know what, maybe I try this on a small piece and see if it sells. Small end table, a side table, a stool, um, something with legs on it. Um, in the um, another technique I'm getting ready to do, you know, use them on small decorative, use them as stripes. Try to test out your market and see where it's going. I have a feeling somebody is going to walk into your store and go, oh my God, I have to have that piece while you're saying, oh my God, that's the ugliest thing I've ever done. So with that said, have fun with it. Think outside the box. Don't be afraid to use color, especially when you're using gold. I mean, you could go oranges and pinks and blues and you can, the world is, is totally an endless opportunity when you're using gold. And also remember, you can also get in silver and rose gold and there's all different coppers and bronzes and there's lots you can do with it. So I want you to remember that. Look at hardware in a different light. Look at picture frames, mirror frames, 
all the things, all those small things, if you have a booth or a store, those small things sometimes are what carries the rent in your store. So sometimes think small, don't think big. Anyways, enjoy this tutorial. And if you have any questions, let me know. We'll see you on the other side. Bye. The only thing you need for a project like this is an already painted piece that's been sealed, your gold leaf here, some fun little brushes here. You can see the gold leaf um, here. It's nice thin paper, gold leaf and your adhesive. Um, the the he, adhesive I use is Mona Lisa Speedball Metal Leaf. Work, great stuff, good stuff. When you're doing gold leaf, um, you wanna make sure a couple of things. You have a vacuum handy, um, broom handy, your pets are put away and your husband's left for the day because he is going to come back with gold all over the floor so you wanna make sure he is gone while you do the, a project like this. It is important that your piece is already painted. You do not want to paint after you've already applied the gold leaf. You also want to make sure that your piece has a nice sealant on it. Um, it doesn't have to be two or three coats like your finished piece, just a one coat on it. Make sure there's no wax. If you have waxed the piece before, like you saw me do in the 101 tutorial, you want to take that off with some rubbing alcohol, just kind of wipe it down. Touch up any things that you need to touch up and you should be good to go. Um, so again, this is a super easy project. It takes a little bit of patience with it. Um, you have to work a little bit quick. And you do have about a 20 minute, when you apply the adhesive, there's about a 20 minute wait period before you can actually apply the, the leafing to it. So make sure that you are not impatient with a project like this. You definitely wanna put it on, go get a cup of coffee, um, and then come back. And if you're wondering, you see words on my shirt here, it says, all I wanna do is drink coffee, pet my pug and paint furniture. If any of you are kind of wondering what that says behind my thing. So you have to excuse my attire today. Um, and I have everything here. I have the coffee here. I've got the painted furniture, but I don't have a pug here in the workshop with me today, but maybe next time. So we're gonna go ahead with this piece and get started. The best thing to do with a piece that you're gonna go leaf is you wanna mark out whether it's in your mind or you actually get a pen or a pencil or whatever, you're gonna kinda wanna get an idea of where you wanna apply your gold leaf. Obviously I don't plan on, um, I'm not gonna apply the gold leaf to the entire piece, but I do want, in my mind, I have a couple of different scenarios. I have one that starts little here and I kinda build it across so the whole little portion of this is leaf. Or I'm thinking about applying the adhesive up like this so it kind of looks like i got stuff coming from the bottom of it and so that's probably what i'm going to do because this is going to make a big mess so you will see um you want to make sure that your piece you can even take your little paintbrush here make sure that you get all the pug hair the cat hair the dust off of the piece because you know we, we all know that our houses are just dust free these days mine is not so you're gonna go ahead and just kind of clean up your piece a little bit. This one's not too bad. And I'm gonna set my foils aside here because once I start separating these foils, I gotta start working with them. They're super thin, super fine. And you can order these. You can already see them flying in the wind. These, uh, where I get mine, are on Amazon. The links are in the project list. Um, so you, along with the brushes, the adhesive, all that on Amazon. Uh, once I get done with the gold leaf, I will be finishing the piece off with polyacrylic. You definitely want to finish, anytime you use the leafing, you want to put a sealant on top of it. It will start to tarnish over time, uh, just like um, any silver or gold wood. And you can't take it and dip it into a, you know, a big vat of Tarnex to clean it up. So you definitely want to seal it to keep the color of it. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to use this brush later on. This brush here, this brush here is a flat head brush and this is a pointy brush. This one works really well for applying the adhesive and this brush here, you'll see later on, we're gonna be patting down the, the foils with a motion like that. So we're gonna go ahead with this. This kind of comes out a, um, it's a very liquidy, milky substance and um, it kind of has a funky smell to it, so don't be alarmed um, when the smell, you get the smell from it. And you can see it's a little bit milky there. And when it dries, it dries clear. Now what I love about the milky 
ness of it is that it helps you see where you apply it. So you're just gonna kind of paint this on in the pattern that you think you want to apply your papers. And you don't really need to rush too much on applying the adhesive because it can take a little bit of time for it to start to get ticky tacky. And see for me, I'm just gonna do kind of burst of adhesive here. And then obviously get anywhere that you think is going to need it. Now I can already feel on my hands, I can feel, you see that? The tackiness of it. No pun intended, by the way. Now this is drying a little bit quicker I'm used to. So if you find that you're getting it to dry quicker than you would like, then you can just do your piece in sections. You know, break it off into a couple of different sections. It's gonna obviously, depending on your weather, it's still, well, it's always hot and humid here in Florida. So obviously things either take forever to dry, like polyurethanes, or they dry really fast, like my adhesive is doing here. And you may think that this bottle is super tiny, um, but let me see if I can kind of show you here. You can see I still have quite a bit of adhesive, maybe use maybe 10% of it. So I'm just going to set that off to the side there. You definitely want to make sure that after you're done with a project like this to keep your brushes nice and neat. Um, make sure you get them in, obviously wash them with soap and water. And then also make sure that you get, especially brushes like this, into fabric softener as soon as possible to keep them nice and soft. And you can kind of test the ticky tackiness of it. I can definitely feel it on my hands. So we're gonna let that dry for just a couple of minutes. Okay, so once you feel like you can start seeing now that this is starting to, the, the white is starting to turn into a clear, you can definitely feel the ticky tackiness on the sides. Now this comes the fun part. These sheets are super, super thin. They break really, really easily. So you, you definitely want to apply them. I try to get them, keep them on the wax paper and you literally just stick it to it like that. And if you have like a little bit that clumps up, you just take that and you apply it and it's gonna get everywhere. So if you have crazy OCD like I do, this project is going to kill you. And basically you're just gonna go I'm just going to just keep on going. If your hands get sticky at any point, go ahead and, uh, you know, obviously go wash them. And if you find that you have some spots that aren't taking so well, there may not have been enough adhesive on those spots. There's going to be more um, difficult areas. Oh, that one came off the sheet. Ah! Now, I know you're looking at this going, that is a hot mess. Um, just stick with me here. You'll see. You got to get these kind of applied first. So you're just going to keep working these. I'm just gonna keep sticking these on wherever they'll stick. And we're gonna worry about making them all pretty in a minute. And obviously anywhere that the gold leaf does not stick, it's okay, because you just go back and stick some more on it, put a little bit more adhesive on it. Okay, so you can see here, while well, we'll start with this, with the hard bristle here. You see, you just kind of work that out. I know you were panicking there for a minute, so don't panic. See how that works? And you kind of, that's why I said you're going to make a big giant mess. So you want to make sure that the kids and the pets and everybody's in. And you're just going to kind of work these out. And you can kind of pick up these little pieces and stick them here. Cause like I feel, I can feel the ticky tacky. 
and this going on right here. And you see how the brush, you just kind of smooth it out. And you just keep working it until you get the result that you want. Like I want a little bit more flaring up. So that's something we'll just have to keep working at. Now the cost to do a piece like this, it's not expensive. I would say maybe around $12 for the papers and the glue. Obviously, if you have to buy brushes, it's gonna be a little bit more, but for the most part, it's a pretty inexpensive way to pimp out a piece. If you're finding that there's some spots that are not taking the foils, I have a spot over here, it's probably because there's not enough adhesive on it. While you wanna be light with the adhesive, at some points you may miss a section there's obviously a section here that i want i put a little extra over here mainly because i'm working on this piece here the section here i'm going to fix that up here and so i'm really happy with how it's coming along over here so as you're working with your papers you're definitely going to start to see where your design is it takes a little bit of work to get at it and to have your vision come up but i think what i want to do with the piece is bring the sides up a little bit higher and then have kind of that dip down into the middle so sometimes you just got to go with it what you initially thought may not be what you initially get and that's why uh, you got to be patient you know and keep working with it now if your intention is to have a solid finish you're probably going to want to work more instead of what i'm doing kind of sporadically just kind of like brushing it on you're definitely going to want to work carefully into one section make sure it's covered then move on to the next section that is not the look that i want i do want some of this gorgeous blue popping through so i do not want the look of a solid but you can definitely do this some great ideas would be to tape a piece off and do stripes um, that's a great idea the drawer fronts you could do those as well so there's lots of different ways you could use this and the skill level on this you could see that you could probably get your kindergartner to help you with it and it'll be just as beautiful when you get done with it so there is zero skill level except for patience with this so and obviously a big giant mess so sometimes when you go back and you add um, more adhesive you may forget where you added it like I just did um, so you just go around and feel the piece you know obviously not sticky here um, definitely sticky there so you definitely want to just go around and feel for your sticky spots and try to use up all your little scrap papers if you get them stuck to the table this is kind of like Peel them off as best as you can. Um, you definitely want to try to be resourceful and not wasteful. Now, one of the things I love about painting furniture or redoing furniture or flipping furniture, or whatever you want to call it, one of the things I really do love about it is when you're painting or when you're creating, you don't typically think about anything else. So that's why I love doing this. You can just kind of be your own person, clear your mind, clear your soul. It's good for you. I wonder if the doctor says furniture painted piece a day will keep the doctor away. Something like that. Yeah, I like that side a lot. So again, you just want to go through here and look for any spots that are real tacky and make sure that you get those, those spots covered up because you definitely don't want, before you seal it, any um, dirt hair, you know, pug hair, cat hair, whatever. Um, to stick to the sticky spots. You definitely want to make sure that you have a nice, smooth, non-sticky finish. And you can see when we started out, like I was be, trying to be all like clean and tidy. And that's kind of how creating goes. You know, when you get ready to create and you got everything laid on your table and it's perfect. And then by the time you get done, you've not only taken over like the kitchen, the dining room, and your craft room trying to get something done. Well, that's no different in painting. We have hopes of being all clean and tidy. Now the best thing to do when you get done with a piece, when you feel like you're done, and like I said, when you're so close to a piece, you see every little like layer piece, every little bit of ticky tack, every bit of little everything. 
just step back, step back from the piece, take a picture of it, look at it and go, I'm really, really happy with that. I'm gonna keep that. So when you're up close to something, even when you're painting, you get so annoyed with yourself because you can see every little ding and every little mark and every little piece. And that it, this is not meant to be a frustrating process by any means. Now my recommendation is to let this piece sit overnight, a good 12 to 24 hours. Let that, you can finish it off if you're in a hurry. Um, sometimes us, I've always said, crafters are always impatient. Artists are always um, patient. They have all the time in the world. An artist can do this and the crafters were like, no, we need it done right now. So my recommendation would be to let the piece sit. Let the piece sit, um, let the all the tiki tack glues dry and then go through with your brush. Ooh, look, I just gilded my brush, isn't that pretty? Um, go through the piece after it's set, you know, at least give it at least 12 hours. I know you want to get it done, but give it at least 12 hours and just go through and wipe. So you can still see the dust marks going, the extra layers, just go through, wipe the piece down, definitely vacuum the area up, get rid of all the little dust. Um, you can see all the little dust marks here. You want to get rid of all of that. You do not want to seal your piece when you got all the stuff floating around, okay? Because then you're gonna transfer it up here where you don't want it. So take the time, get your area all nice and clean again, and then go back and um, do the sealer. Now, I won't be showing, there's no need to do the sealer on this one. We're gonna be using uh, polycrylic. You can go back to the one-on-one -on -one video on how to seal. It's exactly the same way that we sealed this piece in the first video. Same way for painting. If you need to know how to paint, you're new to the $5 Paint Club. Go back to the one-on-one -on -one video. We have all of everything you need there from prepping the piece, cleaning the piece, um, painting the piece, sealing the piece, waxing the piece. So just go back. We're gonna be using, we'll be sealing this piece in about 12 hours um, with the clear mat, polycrylic clear mat. You definitely wanna seal your piece with some sort of clear finish. Um, I don't recommend, there's no need to use a polyurethane. A water-based product is perfectly fine for this. Um, if you're using a product maybe that you're not overly familiar with, a new product on the market or something like that, test the little corner um, before you go and do your entire piece, especially when you're using foils. You don't want to have a chemical reaction between your sealer and the foil and then it turns a funky color. So definitely test the little corner. I've used polyacrylic before, especially in a lot of my sign work. So I know for sure that I'm going to get exactly what I want from the polyacrylic. Um, so that's usually my go-to. I use the clear mat. I don't like shiny stuff. But even the clear mat is not going to take away the shine from this because obviously that's part of the characteristics of this piece. So with that said, that is our course on how to leaf furniture. Um, we got to come up with some better name, leafing, gilding, foiling, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just another way to add a little something to a piece like this. This is, you know, a $20 thrift store find, which my husband says is $19 too much. Um, and this is easily going to be you know, probably a $200 piece um, with um, actually easily. So probably 200, 225 here in the Tampa market. It's a great way for 12 bucks to add a little extra something. If you add the paint, um, the foils, the sealant, you're probably looking out the door at $35. So it's, you know, it could be somewhere between $175 to $200 profit and you had fun and you de-stressed while you're at it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know. On the sidebar off to the left is a discussions tab. You're feel free. You can ask me questions there inside the private Facebook group, private Facebook group um, as well. You can always drop us an email at hello at $5 Paint Club, number five, or you can spell it out, F-I-V-E. And I hope you guys are all well. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.